Um, I'm Thibaut Sonier. I work for Igalia, a consulting, consultancy company, uh, working with the streamer mainly on uh, web platforms, uh, web engine, etc. Um, today I'm going to present video editing with the streamer. So basically the video editing stack for nonlinear editing, I mean. Um, and, uh, and the PTV video editing application, which is built upon all that stack. So I'm going to introduce a bit the architecture we have in JStreamer for uh, video editing. Um, that stack has started pretty soon in the development of uh, JStreamer in 2001. Um, the nonlinear engine was started, was called Gnonlin at that point. Um, and then it has been evolving quite a lot since then. So basically, uh, non the nonlinear engine is a set of JStreamer elements which uh, introduces low-level primitives for video editing, um, meaning basically doing dynamic pipelines to create a final, a, final, um, a final stream, which is actually the composition of uh, several, several uh, input sources, effects, etc. So here I'm going to explain a bit how that works. So the main, the main element in the, in the uh, NLE uh, set of NLE plugin uh, is the NLE composition. So basically the composition is responsible for creating dynamic uh, pipelines and expose as one source the, the result, the end result stream of, um, of uh, the, 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 of that. Um, so basically here what I'm explaining is a simple uh, NLE composition. So here you have one UR decode bin uh, NLE object, which is going through time from zero to 10 seconds with a, a low priority. We'll explain a bit what priority is about. Um, then you have here UI decode bin one, which is another NLE object. That object has been set to start around uh, one second and, and, uh, and, uh, and be uh, present inside the composition for two seconds. And then here we have a compositor, which is basically the the main mixer in the NLE composition. That one is expandable, meaning that uh, it will basically last for the whole duration of the composition. Um, so here, what NLE composition will do is at two seconds. So right here, you can see it will just pick elements from uh, lower, uh, uh, high, yeah, lower, lowest priority, which is two, to highest priority, which is zero the other way around, and, and build the pipeline with that. So here you can see that it will go and pick up the UI that could be in, uh, zero element, then UI that could be in one, and plug it into the compositor. So that means that those two streams will actually be uh, composited and uh, mixed together. Um, and then another example, here you still have the UI that could be at, five, at, five, at seven seconds, let's say. You have the UI that could be in, uh, still present, so it will pick that up. Then it will add the aging TV effect and output that uh, into the compositor to, um, to output the, the, the stream. So the elements are picked and, uh, and removed on the fly uh, during the advancement of, uh, of the time in the pipeline. Um, yeah. So after that, uh, we have higher level APIs, which is basically the distributed editing services, which uh, implements higher level concepts. Um, the idea is that those concepts actually match what the video editing application uh, needs. So the main concept of uh, G GS are the GS project, which uh, basically is a list of assets. By assets, I mean um, media files, for example, can also be a transition type, et cetera. Um, the project is serializable, so we have formatters, et cetera, to be able to uh, save a project with a timeline. And um, then we have the concept of timeline, which is basically uh, containing several tracks. So a track is an output type. So you would have one audio track and one video track. And in, in, in terms of implementation, a track is basically wrapping an NLE composition. 
So here the timeline, the GS timeline, is a JStreamer element, a JStreamer bin, that contains several tracks, which also are um, JStreamer elements, and those actually wrap the NLE composition. So what I explained before. So the idea with that is uh, that the user can just go and uh, add clips and do not have to handle priority, priorities, etc. have uh, audio and video handled together through, through clips and... Uh, so yeah, let's let's bring up the last last uh, concept, which is GS layer. So basically, a GS layer uh, aims at uh, governing the the painting order, basically, meaning that uh, the first layer will be painted first. In, in in the video case, it's the simplest one, and in audio, it doesn't make so much sense. But it's a concept that is in a in video editing, even for audio in general. So here we have. You have the video layer, uh, the first layer that is on the first, and then you have the second layer that is on the afterward, etc. And then uh, that's all the time composited with a compositor that we always add in the in the GS timeline. Um, so yeah, the the, the 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 GS layer is the object that contains the the clips. So uh, the, a clip basically is a media file usually. And then, um, yeah. And then we will say, for example, you will say a clip. I want to play that file from one second to five seconds inside that clip, and I want it to happen inside the timeline at ten seconds. So, yeah. Uh, notable JS feature. So there are some features that are basically just uh, making use of J of uh, JStreamer concepts. So, for example, a keyframe. So a keyframe is a timestamp uh, that is used to indicate the start of a change of a property. So that's basically uh, reusing the, the well, um, who said that? The, um, oh, I can't remember the name. Anyway, um, and then we have the notion of proxy, which is uh, basically we have the media file, the main media file, which can be whatever JStreamer supports, but to do video editing, what we want is to have control over the, the codecs that are used during the edition so that uh, it's faster to, to seek inside. And um, yeah, so, and, and some, so, so we have some formats that are not properly supported uh, for video editing because seek is too, too slow. So you can just go and say, I, I will use a proxy for that, and uh, I will use JPEG or ProRes or whatever um, to, during the editing, you, those files will be used, but then when you do rendering, you can reuse the, the proxy, or you can actually use the main uh, file to avoid uh, losing quality, basically. In terms of bindings, uh, the GS library is uh, fully introspectable, so we have Python bindings that are very well tested because the PTV application is actually using them. It's written in Python. Um, then we have uh, the JavaScript bindings through JGS. That's not really that's not really tested, but I've been told it works. Uh, we also have C# -sharp bindings, so that's through uh, JStreamer# -sharp bindings. Um, you can install that with uh, with the Nugget that, uh, on Nuggets directly. So it's really simple to get started on Windows, for example, and uh, and uh, use a GS in C Sharp um, on, on whatever platform, actually. And uh, then we are planning on, on generating the Rust bindings. Uh, it should not be that hard, because I believe that the, the annotation, etc., are pretty much complete in GS. So it's basically a matter of doing the work, and uh, we'll make it happen at some point. In terms of documentation, uh, we have been rewriting the documentation uh, using hot dog, restructuring everything so that you can easily uh, start using GS to script some video editing. So the idea here is that you can, like the API is very high level and you should be able to write a simple, a simple uh, Python script, for example, and, and get uh, complex video editing, repetitive video editing with different files coming in, etc., and just go and, and do it in, in Python. Um, we have... So, so the idea here is that the documentation should be like really explainative of how to use the different APIs. The API is quite big in, in GS because we want to support 
like complex use cases, but we want the documentation like, like to explain well um, how to get started with it and 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 um, and um, fulfill simpler use cases. Uh, we have Python examples with GS that are pretty uh, interesting, I think, and uh, we, we want to write more, obviously. So, now I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the PTV video, video editing application. So, uh, PTV is written in Python. It's only like 50,000 lines of code, so it's quite small in terms of code because everything is actually done in JStreamer and in GS. Um, and it has been started in 2004, and we are basically finally reaching 1.0, meaning that we have been working for a long time, stabilizing the few features we have. It's not really a complete application, but we already have the basic feature working properly now. So, yeah, it's pretty nice to see that all the work that we have been doing in JStreamer is now paying off, and, and we will be able to, uh, to release 1.0 soon. So. Feature-wise, it's frozen. It has been frozen for a long time, actually. And in terms of bugs, we have only 10 bugs open, two complex ones. By that, I mean that, uh, for example, in, uh, in NLE, we still, need to, um, we still need to refactor a bit the NLE composition to fix a few, a few uh, audio issues. It's almost done also. And uh, then we have five patches that are already in review. So, yeah, should happen really soon now, I hope. We also need, most, we also need more testing, but yeah, people are starting to be happy using uh, the application. I will just do a, a quick demo showing up the, the features we have. So that's the application. Um, can you see? Yeah? Oh, no, you can't. What happened? <laughs> Okay. So here you can just import clips, and then um, let's just add a clip to the timeline. You can see around. Oh, let's make that bigger. Like that. And let's put another clip in the timeline so you can just grab. The idea is that the application should be really simple to use. Uh, it should be straightforward to, to understand what you have to do to do some small editing. Uh, obviously, the goal of PTV is to be like professional editing application at some point. Uh, it's missing many features for that. But um, yeah, we want to take the time to make things correctly. And we have been working mainly on JStreamer uh, in the last five years, I would say. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, for example, uh, as I told before, we have the notion of keyframe. So here we are, I'm actually editing the, the half a property of, uh, of uh, the video, the video uh, clip. And I can just move the keyframe so that uh, the alpha value changes. Here you won't see much, but here you can see that, for example, right here, um, yeah, the alpha value is going down, and, and, and it will just like transition. So it's really simple to just like change the change the alpha value of uh, of uh, of uh, the clip here. So that basically what is happening here is that the the first layer is uh, totally uh, opaque, so you cannot see at the beginning the the second clip, but then when you change the alpha property, it's going to uh, to change. <laughs> and now you can also edit stuff like right from the from the um, viewer, so that you can move clip around like that pretty easily. So just yep, move them this way. Um, we also have. Yeah, let's just do it. Uh, we also have simple transitions. So here it's actually transitioning, changing the alpha and uh, doing a transition. What we can do also is changing the type of transitions. So here it's going to be a bit weird, but <laughs> it, you, you have simple ways to change your transition. 
the nice thing is that here we're actually like reusing everything that JStreamer provides us. And it's really easy now that we have the infrastructure to just have new JStreamer elements and reuse them for, for anything. For example, for effects also, it's pretty simple to, to just add effects. Here we just go through the JStreamer registry and check all the, all the effects um, for video. Uh, in that case, and uh, and you can just go and and add effects. I I can't read anything, but anyway, let's do that. You can just move them on the on the timeline. And uh, here I will just uh, remove the reset that up. And here, for example, you can even keyframes the the effect properties. So here I'm now keyframing the scratch lines of the aging TV. So yeah, everything is exposed, just uh, introspecting everything we have in JStreamer. So it's pretty nice. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I, I also talked a bit about proxies. So here, basically we are using proxies for uh, the, the clips that are inside the timeline. We try to make it like totally transparent to the end user. So when someone um, imports a clip in the, in the media library, we'll just go and transcode it to, uh, to JPEG and Opus in, inside the Matroska, basically. Um, and the user doesn't need to know that. Um, you can still use the clips. We try to just use the clip. It's going to be slower. The result is not that, I mean, the, the user experience is not that great in, during the transcoding. And then when it's done, you just keep doing it. So uh, now I'm, I'm uh, showing PTV 1.0, which is getting out soon. But we already, uh, as I said, we, we have been frozen for almost, um, for almost uh, two years now, feature-wise, for 1.0. But we have kept accepting new features on the master branch. So we already branched out uh, 1.0. And, uh, and uh, on master, we have many new features that are going to to be released for 2.0, basically. Um, for example, we already have plugin support that have been uh, implemented during uh, the 2017 um, JSOC, Google Sum of Code. So here is just a free sound library uh, plugin that the, the students uh, did for us. Here we also have uh, the implementation, uh, we also implemented the rich effect configuration. So here you have a three wheel color correction already uh, uh, implemented in master, basically. Um, so it just, yeah, new interfaces, it's really easy now to uh, implement new interfaces for effects. Because before we were just like grabbing all the properties, writable properties of uh, JStreamer elements and exposing that to the end user, which is pretty neat because you, we just like auto-generate all the UIs to um, to let the full control to the end user, but then um, it's, not, you, it's not always really user friendly. Um, and we have been refining the, the, the user interface. Um, the Irish uh, Fuller have been uh, working on that during uh, last summer. It's pretty, pretty nice work there. Uh, little details, much better handled, a nice uh, welcome view, etc. So the, yeah, so it's simple to get you in into, a, into the application. Um, scale proxy support. So basically, as I explained, the proxies are um, uh, files that have been transcoded to a better format for video editing. In that case, we can also um, rescale the, 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 the assets so that um, it's faster in the application in the end. So yeah, you are editing with smaller, smaller assets. And the future, uh, we have been working on speed rate control. Um, Many students try, started that, never finished the, the Google Sum of Code on that one. Um, so basically, it's about yeah, rate control. We already have in video rate. We have a property for that. We did that so that you can change the speed of, of the video. That's not supported yet. Uh, I think it's a matter of it's not, it's not, it's not much work anymore. Um, we already have everything in GS to support that kind of use cases. Now, uh, the, the, the hard part will be to be able to, to um, have keyframes on the speed of a, of a clip. And uh, that we haven't really looked into that yet. But it's doable. Uh, I mean, the JStream API is all, allows us, probably allows us to do that kind of things. So, yeah, it's a matter of implementation. Also, PTV is mostly using or all, all, only using uh, 
um, software, encoders, decoders, um, rendering, even mixing, etc. So one big step forward is to use the probably the GL uh, the GL um, elements for mixing for all that kind of things. Uh, it's it's planned for for the near future, probably for 2.0. Um, also, we would like to be able to uh, communicate better with other uh, software that are used in the video, video uh, editing industry. So we will need to handle ADLs and, and uh, so that's, ju that's just a format to describe a, a video editing projects, basically, and, uh, and timeline. And open timeline IO is also something like that, um, which is like the new standard for that uh, in the industry, basically. Um, so also what we would like to have is, as PTV is pretty simple to use, we want to be able um, to, to use it for, uh, for who said that, for um, reviewing cuts, basically. So what we would like to have is to be able to have uh, timelines inside timeline, meaning that you could have like one scene of a, of a, of a project in a timeline and then you open, and then it's just a clip in the end, and then you have another scene that is also a timeline but you use it as a clip only, and then you can just move like parts that have already been cut around and, uh, and uh, have a higher level of, uh, of uh, editing, basically. Um, yeah. And there are, yeah, there are many features that, that we have been thinking about and uh, that we are going to implement. Um, and basically, that will be it. Uh, do you have any questions? Yeah. Um, so, my needs with the uh, TV are very, very simple. Yeah. Um, but one of the basic needs is this video rate that you mentioned, like video per speed up. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so the, the question was, are we going to implement a video rate soon because it's really needed <laughs> for simple cuts? Um, so yeah, the, 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 the response is definitely yes, that's something we will focus on as soon as we have 1.0 out. Um, it's another feature, it's not so simple to implement, and so it's not for 1.0, but yeah, it will go into the next, the next version. Um, yeah, for sure. For the proxies, is there any case in which you just uh, transmux, or you always like transcode and uh, transmux? If there the, is any case in, where in the proxies, do you mm -hmm. always uh, have to uh, re-encode and change the the muxer format to have a, an indexed uh, um, container, or you use or you can also just uh, transmux, or is there, for example? In the oh. past, there was a GST index API in JStreamer, okay. just to support these use cases. So, uh, transmux, transmuxing will not make so much sense uh, because basically what we want is to have codecs that we properly support. Uh, now, if the codec is already supported and you are just, for example, re-encoding for audio, uh, I haven't checked, but it should just transmux uh, the video part. Uh, the thing is that you usually don't have the formats that, I mean, most, most, uh, most um, camcorders and stuff like that don't, don't use the, the formats that we use for editing. But, yeah. It's, I believe we set the smart, uh, smart encoding property on, uh, on uh, GST encode bin. It might work. Maybe it's just not doing it. <laughs> I have... Yeah. Question: uh, Do you support hardware accelerated enc encoding? For encoding, we do. So now, if you have GSTV API uh, encoders on your system, we make sure that the decoders are not used because they are just not working well enough for video editing yet. But um, for encoding, when you select in the in the rendering um, dialog, you can select uh, via API codecs encoders. So yeah, and for encoders, it works well. Because there is at that at that point in the in the pipeline there is no um, no uh, dynamic things happening.
Okay, thank you then.